Uh, Pythagorean theorem. Okay. Uh, let's actually capitalize the N here uh, because I personally myself sometimes have a problem spelling this. You can put an A, some people put an N here. Pythagorean theorem. Okay, what does that come from? Well, I'm sure you guys have heard of Aristotle, maybe Plato. You guys have heard of these? Yeah. Most of you guys, yeah, they come yeah. from Greece. They're philosophers, very famous. Maybe two of the most famous, along with Socrates. There was a guy who influenced these two people. Okay, Pythagoras. Maybe that's for the U.S. Yes. Um, Pythagoras, he was a philosopher. He came up with, you know, not only uh, philosophies about math, but he also came up with, um, like, other philosophies that dealt with life, right? Now, a fun fact about uh, Pythagoras, he's from 530 B.C., so that's before Christ, right? And the dude was a vegetarian. So that didn't just originate in California in the 2000s in South Africa, being a vegetarian. Right? This happened a very long time ago. Uh, now, his theory influenced, influenced another philosopher, which, which we refer to as Euclid, another, another um, guy from Greece, I think from about 300 BC, right? This is all dates back. Logical thinking. Now, this, this individual philosopher, Euclid, came up with uh, basically looking at, looking at mathematical systems. Okay? Now, a lot about philosophy is using logic. If this happens, then this happens. Thinking, if, then, kind of. That's where this comes from. Really, that's, this is where geometry comes from. And what it's called is Euclidean geometry. Okay, this is, where, this is what we study now, part of what we study now. Okay, now the idea, the idea is what we like to call, I call it Pythag, right? Makes my life easier. Takes out the spelling I make of O and N and M all the time, it's called the Pythag. It's this idea that a hypotenuse, a hypotenuse, a side opposite, you'll see I'll start to call this a hypot, a hypotenuse is the sum of the square of the two other sides. Now the two other sides we'll call leg and leg. And basically what it's saying is that the sum of these two squares, if we were to make the sides squares, the sum of this, these two squares, will be equal to the sum of this square, right? Basically, we're attaching, this should be a square, a square to each side of the triangle. Now, if you look at it, what we'll most commonly use for our hypotenuse is the C. And then we'll, for our legs, we use A and C. And what they're saying, or A and B. And what they're saying is the sum, the sum of the square of the two legs or other sides of the right triangle will be equal to the square of the hypotenuse. Meaning, if I have a triangle that has sides three and four, three and four, I can square each of these legs, add them together, which is sum, and then solve for this hypotenuse. Nine squared, or three squared nine, plus four squared 16, is equal to c squared. 25 is equal to c squared. Take the square root, c is equal to five. And what you see is, this individual here, Pythagoras, which influenced these two philosophers and helped Euclid, or see this guy Euclid, he came up with this system and this 
this uh, creating math using logic and deduction, he used a lot of the ideas that Pythagoras and other Greek philosophers came up with and basically created a system and created a subject. So what we're studying now in 2019 AD was created more than 2300 years ago. And it still, it still holds true. It's still, and basically these guys came up with patterns and they're able to find things that, that always work. Even if I use different sides, like maybe six and eight, in which you, okay, okay, six squared plus eight squared equals c squared, 36 plus 64 is equal to c squared, 100 is equal to c squared, square root 100, this side here is 10. And what we like to call these, where you get the 3, 4, 5, and the 6, 8, 10, what I like to call these is Pythagorean triples, Pythag triples, meaning two integers squared will equal, will equal a third integer squared. There's no decimals or fractions here. 